Hi, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to teach you how to crochet the wavy baby blanket. This baby blanket is crocheted using the ripple stitch with four color blocking stripes on either end with a larger ripple stitch section in the center using a main color. Each of the color blocking stripes on the ends are separated by a row of slip stitch stripes in the main color as well to just give a nice bold look and separate those color blocking stripes. This baby blanket is written in four sizes and the size that I'm showing here is the stroller size which is definitely plenty big for a baby blanket but the other sizes are listed as well if you want to make one of those and there are also tips for modifying this blanket on my website as well. The yarn that I'm using for this blanket is originally lovely Pima yarn. This is a DK weight yarn and the hook that I'm using is a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. I really do love using Pima cotton for baby blankets because it's so soft, very cooling, and it has beautiful stitch definition. I do have more color palette options and some ideas listed in my website if you would like to check that out as well as the yardage requirements if you are modifying this blanket or using some yarn that you already have in your stash at home. So to begin, you will take what you have decided is color A. So as I mentioned before, I'm going to be working color A in jam, the dark red color. So to begin, I'm going to create a slip knot and I like to work my slip knot so that the end that I can tighten is actually the end that's connected to the ball of yarn. This just makes it a little more secure, I think. Once you have that slip knot on your hook, you will chain the necessary number for the size of blanket that you are making. This will be different um, depending on whatever size you are making. I'm doing a miniature version here just to show you all the steps for the sake of the tutorial without it being too long. If you're modifying this pattern and you just want to know this stitch, you will be working a multiple of 12 plus two. So I'm actually chaining 26 to start. 24 is my multiple of 12 and then add two on top of that. So just be sure you look at the pattern and chain the correct number needed for your size. So the part that we will be working into in our chain is actually the bar behind the chain. If you turn your chain over, there's a third strand of yarn and working into this gives us a nice smooth stitch to work our border at the end. So in the third chain from the hook, we will work into the bar behind it. So in the bar behind the third chain from the hook, you will work a double crochet. And this is actually an increase, so we will work two double crochets into this first stitch, both of them into this stitch. So just yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two once more to complete that double crochet. And then we will work one double crochet into each of the next three stitches. Again, we're working into the bar behind the chain. So just make sure you turn your chain over and work into that single strand, the bar strand. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the, time, the final two. So once you have these three double crochet stitches worked, you can see here that we have five stitches total. That's because the first stitch we worked two double crochets into, and then we did three double crochets after that. So now we're working a double crochet two together stitch. So what that is is yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and do not complete that stitch. Yarn over once more, pull up a loop into the next stitch so you have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through three. So now you can look at your stitches there. You can see it's basically like two double crochet stitches and then it ends as one. So again, yarn over, pull up a loop into the next stitch, yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop into the next stitch. Now you have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through all three. So that was two 
double crochet two together stitches. So now we work three double crochet stitches, a double crochet stitch in each of the next three stitches, just even. And this is how our pattern goes. It's a double crochet twice, three double crochet stitches, double crochet two together, double crochet two together, and then three more individual double crochet stitches, and then a two double crochet stitches in the next stitch. It's a pretty easy repeat to memorize. So now once more, we're back to the two double crochet stitches into the next stitch, the double crochet increase stitch. So just work two double crochets into that next stitch. And now we have our first part of the repeat done. You can kind of see the ripple wave starting to form, but it gets more obvious when you have more rows as well. So now we start that over. So now we have to work a double crochet increase once more. So two double crochet stitches into the next stitch. And then we work three double crochet stitches even. Just one double crochet per stitch three times. When patterns mention work even or work straight it generally just means work one stitch per stitch there's no increases or decreases so work three stitches even here just three double crochet stitches even you'll definitely do a lot of double crochets this pattern it is mostly all double crochet which makes it work pretty quick so you can see there we have the next three double crochet stitches and we'll do another double crochet decrease so yarn over pull up a loop Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through all three to complete that stitch. And one more double crochet, two together. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop in the next stitch. Just make sure you're working into the bar behind the chain still. Yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through three. Those are our two double crochet two together stitches. And now three double crochet stitches even, which again just means three single double crochet stitches. And then in our last stitch, we have one more double crochet. And then in our last stitch, we increase once more so two double crochet stitches into that final stitch it's pretty easy to memorize this pattern the reason that we end with just the double crochet increases is because this keeps our pattern centered so that we don't get off balance and that the points the waves are always in the correct spot and properly oriented so completing that final double crochet stitch, you can see now this miniature version that I'm doing has two repeats of the pattern, but you will be working quite a few more across your blanket to shape your row. This is just a miniature version again for the sake of the tutorial. So pause here and repeat all the way across your row and I will show you how to work the next row. So now you will chain two and turn and our chain two is not considered the first stitch of this row that's just our turning chain we're going to ignore that that's not the first stitch of the row I like it this way better because it kind of has a more even looking edge so now in that first stitch which is our third chain from the hook we're going to be working two double crochet stitches into that first stitch so you can see right there. And again, just when you add the border, the not counting that turning chain makes it a little bit more even and cohesive here. So now I'm going to zoom forward just a little bit because we're just working the three double crochet stitches again. And now we have to do the double crochet two together into the next stitch. So you can see there how our double crochet two togethers are on top of the last double crochet two togethers. 
which is kind of nice. So remember just before you finish that first stitch, you pull up a loop in the second stitch and then pull through two and then yarn over, pull through three. And there's our first one. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three, just like that. And now work three double crochet stitches evenly again. And then we will work our increases. So you're decreasing and you're increasing, and that's where you get that wavy chevron type shape. So now we're working two double crochet stitches into that stitch. Next stitch, two double crochet stitches into the next stitch for an increase. You can see there it's starting to shape. And then we have our three double crochet stitches once more. And you will repeat this all the way across the row. So now I'm going to explain to you quickly how to count your stitches. You can see the double crochet increases where there's two into that one stitch below and then you have your three double crochets next to it. Once you kind of learn how to count or how to see your stitches, it's a little bit easier because you don't have to be continuously counting throughout your entire work. Pretty quickly you will get good at this. It's always a little bit hard to figure out how to count at first or how to see the stitches, but as you continue and pay attention to it, you will see them more. So coming up, we have those final three double crochet stitches, and then we have to increase in that final stitch right there. So just make sure that you're not missing this final stitch. If it's hard for you to find, turn your work over, and then you can see how that first double crochet has the stitch right above it. So that's the stitch we're working into. You have to make sure you get this or otherwise your end will slowly taper inwards. So double crochet increase, just two double crochet stitches into this final stitch to complete this row. So now you can see that we have two rows. It's starting to form a little bit more. So once again, we'll chain two and turn our work so now you can see your first stitch there once more. It essentially looks like the third chain from the hook, but that's our first stitch because we're not counting the turning chain as our first stitch. So work two double crochets into this first stitch and then work three double crochets even. So a double crochet into each of the next three stitches. And then do your double crochet two together, double crochet two together, double crochet into each of the next three stitches and then two double crochets into the next stitch. Once more, work this all the way across that repeat that we've been working up until this point. So as you can see here, and now that it's forming a bit, you can see how the double crochet decreases, decreases the double crochet two together. You're working those on top of the previous ones. So Again, it makes it a little bit easier once you figure out how to find those, then you don't necessarily need to count your stitches ever because you know that they're right there. So continue the repeat all the way across. Make sure you get that last stitch. And now that we have three rows, you can really see the ripple wave pattern starting to form. So we have one more row to work of this color and then we will we'll move forward with our slip stitch rows. So again, just chain two and turn and start right in that first stitch once more. Again, that chain two does not count as our first stitch. Just make sure you remember that because in some patterns it does, but I think it always looks better when you add a border if you don't count that first, that turning chain is the first stitch. So once you're working that very final double crochet stitch of the um, double crochet increase, just yarn over and pull through two and then don't do the final yarn over and pull through two. We're going to actually do this part with the new strand of yarn because it makes it a little bit easier to find the stitches that we're going to be slip stitching into. So another thing is just make sure you count your rows. You need four rows of your first color. At this point, we're doing four rows of each color and you can count these pretty easily with rows of double crochet. So pull through the final two loops of that final stitch with your main color 
and then chain one and turn. So now we will be working our slip stitches into that, those red stitches right there. It's very obvious where those are because we pulled through the final loop with the new strand, the white color, which is our main color. So now we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch, which is the red stitch or whatever you're using for color A and pull up a loop and then pull this loop through all the way through to create your first slip stitch. Be careful not to have that first stitch be too tight just because it will make it more difficult later. So insert your hook, pull up a loop, and then pull this loop through the first loop. And that is your slip stitch. We will repeat this all the way across this row. We're not doing any increases or anything special. We're just working one slip stitch per stitch across this row. Be careful not to work these slip stitches too tight because then it will have a bit of a pucker. Slip stitches don't have as much stretch as regular stitches do. So that makes it a little bit more complicated. If you look at the back, you can see it's just that one strand that goes across the back and then we have our red stitches there as well. So just continuing across working our slip stitches. You can see it's just like a really nice little chain type edge across the red and this is what kind of separates the colors and gives that really cool look to the blanket as a design element. So just again be sure you're not working these too tight. A lot of crocheters do work them too tight and if they do you can see there's not much stretch to them so your blanket will like pull in at that point a little bit. If you have to work these with a bigger crochet hook go ahead and do that if you just keep getting them too tight. But if you are conscious about keeping it a little bit looser, it should be just fine. So repeat those slip stitches all the way across this row and then make sure you get that final stitch again. It should be there. If it's hard for you to see, turn it over like I showed you at the beginning. Get that final slip stitch and you can see now how the slip stitch row looks. So now chain one and turn your work over. So this part's a little bit interesting because we're not working into the stitches we just worked, into the row we just worked. We're working into those red stitches again. So the row that we just worked into, we're working into again. So this is why it's nice that it's a different color because it's easier to see and to find the V, the stitch of that red color. If it's a little bit hard for you to get to, just kind of pull back that white and then the stitch should be a little bit easier to work into. It's always a little bit harder the first one, but it's not this difficult all the way across. Just pull the white, like push the white down and keep the red more upright and then it's a little bit easier. So work your first slip stitch. You can see there, we just worked into the red stitch and it's just like another row, just like the one that we worked before. So now another slip stitch into the next stitch and we will repeat this all the way across again. No increases or anything special about this row except for just working into the same row that you worked into last time. It's really nice how it's red. It's hard when you do your first slip stitch row after you do the white section or the main color section and then you get back to your um when you do the first main color slip stitch row to divide it from the colors that's a little bit harder but you'll be really good at it by the time you get to that point so you can see how they're starting to form you have the slip stitches on either side and then you can still see those red stitches on the top of these stitches as well which is nice because we're actually going to be working into those red stitches again after this row so just repeat your slip stitch row all the way across one slip stitch into each stitch and once you get to the end just be sure that first stitch always gets kind of small there you can see it's kind of tucked below but just make sure you get both of those there should be 
if it's hard for you to find that final stitch, just look at the ones, the slip stitches you worked on the other side. So again, if you pull it down a little bit as well, like pull the white out of the way, you should be able to kind of see the red stitch in which stitch you need to slip stitch into. It's always a little tight, the first and the last one, but then it gets easier. So that final slip stitch just like so. And you can see we have our slip stitch rows completed now. You will work these rows at the end of each color section. So four rows of color and then your slip stitch rows. You can see it on the other side. It's just like a nice chain edge that kind of separates the colors. So now we're moving into our second color, color B, which I'm using Penny. And we're going to chain two using Penny and turn. And just as we've done up until this point, our chain two does not count as the first stitch. So just keep that in mind. Kind of hold those strands, the tails out of the way a little bit. I always hold them in my right hand so that they don't get too loose. And then this first one, I'm gonna show you a little trick here. I find that it's pretty hard to get into if you just try and work straight into it. Because as I mentioned, we're working into the red row once more. So this is the third time we're working into it, which is a bit unique, but it gives that really cool slip stitch look. So if you just go right into it, so we're working, we're back to our ripple stitch pattern. So we're working our two double crochet stitches into this first stitch. If you just try and go straight into it, it's really hard and really tight. So a technique that I've kind of learned to make it easier to get into the stitch is just to pull that white over and kind of hold it back with your finger and then it's a lot easier to work into that first stitch. So work a double crochet into that first stitch and then work another double crochet into that first stitch. So back to the ripple stitch pattern. The second one's always a little easier because the first double crochet makes it more lifted up so you can work into it easier. So two double crochet stitches into that first stitch and now we continue, we have three double crochet stitches, one into each of the next three stitches. And again, just kind of pull the white stitches down a little bit and like push the red up if it's hard for you to get your hook into it. Make sure that you don't split through these colors at all because then it will just kind of have not as nice of a look. Um, it takes a little bit of practice to get into just those red stitches again for the third time, but you will be able to do it if you push back your slip stitches and just work slowly. So now we have a double crochet two together, just as we've done, as we did with red for our ripple stitch repeat, and then another double crochet two together, and then repeat the ripple stitch, repeat all the way across the row. The final stitch is easy for you to find because you can see it's just that last one there in red once again, pull down those white, the main color slip stitches, and you should be able to get into that final stitch pretty easily. Work two double crochets into that final stitch. Make sure you don't split through your yarn or pull through any extras when you go through. Again, the first and the, the last one are always a little bit tighter, but it's okay. So once you get those, you can see we have our first row of color B and then our slip stitches on either side that just separate the two colors is a nice border. So now we work another, we work that whole chunk of four rows. So three more rows of the color Penny, color B in ripple stitch, just as we did for all of the red colors. That little bump right there where you turned the slip stitches, don't worry about that. When we do the border that will go away and be blended in and you won't notice at all. So chain two and turn. Once again, that chain two, the turning chain does not count as the first stitch. So we will move forward two double crochet stitches into that first stitch. And then we have to go three or a double crochet into each of the next three stitches. So just as we've been doing our ripple stitch repeat all the way across this row and then two more rows, so four rows, total of the color penny. It's a pretty easy repeat once you get used to it. So coming up on the end of this row, 
you can see how it looks now. You have your slip stitches separating the two colors and your ripples are pretty clearly defined. So you'll work four rows of color A, your slip stitches, four rows of color B, your slip stitches, four rows of color C, your slip stitches, four rows of color D, and your slip stitches. After that, you'll have a pretty big section of just all main color. So in this blanket, all white without any slip stitch rows between. And then after that big section, you'll begin your color blocking again and you'll reverse the order this time. So you'll begin with your slip stitch rows and then color D, slip stitch rows C, and then so on to color B and then color A. So once you finish color A, we're coming up on the last round here of the final row of color A for the end of the blanket. And then I'm going to show you how to begin working the border. So work the final two double crochets and then on that last double crochet stitch, finish the stitch with your main color once more. Again, just be sure you don't pull this through too tight so that the blank blanket doesn't pucker at all. Once you pull that through, you will begin working the border. So to start that, we will just chain one and then turn. And this is the final time that we turn the blanket to work the reverse side. Now we'll just be working around the border. So I'm going to snip jam quick because we're done using all of our um, color blocking colors and we're just finishing up with two rounds of the main color for the border. So as I mentioned, after you chain one and turn, we will begin working round one of the border. So to start, it's really easy. What we're going to do is just do single crochets across the entire row. I've left my ends to weave in until after I do the border just to kind of help hide them in in any way that I can the best possible. So as I mentioned, we're going to be working single crochets across. So in each stitch, single crochet. We're not doing any increases or decreases on this row. It's just single crochet evenly all the way across this row. So insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both these loops. Just a regular single crochet stitch into both stitches. It's really easy across this row because this is just the row that we've been working on up until this point. I'm going to zoom ahead here a little bit because it's pretty repetitive. It's just single crochet stitches evenly. And you can see now I have a few of them worked. So it just kind of gives a nice blanket edge just a finished look to that row. We do have two rows of the border, but this is just the first one. So zooming ahead a little bit more here, continue working your single crochet stitches all the way across this row until you get to the end. So here you can see we have our two final stitches. Make sure you single crochet into each of these stitches and then chain one and we'll turn to work down the edge of the blanket. So just chain one and then turn your blanket. You're not flipping it over, you're just turning it to go down the side of the blanket. So now we're working into the side of these stitches. I zoomed in here to show you really in a detailed close-up way which stitches you're working into. So essentially each double crochet stitch is made up of two chains. And this right here is a turning chain. So we're going to work into one, two of the three bars of each of these turning chain stitches. So there's two chains. We're working two single crochets in this stitch here. You can see there's the three strands that make up that chain and we're inserting into two of the three of those strands. So now our next one here, you can see this is a double crochet stitch. So again, each double crochet is essentially two chains. So you can see each of the stitches there, we're working into two of the three chain or two of the three strands of each chain. So insert your hook again and work a single crochet. And then the next one for that double crochet stitch, insert your hook into two of the three strands 
again. So you'll be working two single crochet stitches in each double crochet row. So for each color blocking section, that will be eight stitches total that you're working as single crochet. If you have ever knit, this is almost like picking up stitches in knitting. We're just single crocheting into the sides of these stitches to almost make a spot for us to crochet the next row and this row. We're evening it all out. If you're experiencing any puckering or pulling or anything that looks not quite right, you might need to loosen up your tension on these stitches. If you work them too tight, you could have a little bit of puckering, but I never find that to be an issue. So now you can see here we have the rows completed, the stitches completed along the red rows. We're actually going to skip the slip stitch rows and then continue down and work into our color B, which is this penny color. So as I mentioned, ignoring those slip stitch rows and continuing on to the section for the color B, we're just picking up two stitches per row of double crochet stitches. So two single crochets per one along the length of each one double crochet stitch. And you're either working into the double crochet stitch itself or the turning chain. It's always kind of hard to get started for this part, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple. Just make sure that you're working into two of those three strands that make up each chain or chain within the stitch, because then you won't have as much gapping or holing on the side of the blanket. It'll just keep it nice and even and the holes will stay the same size. So continuing all the way across this row, as I said, we're going to have eight single crochet stitches picked up or worked along each color block section. So 32 stitches total along the color full section. And then once you get to the main color rows, you'll just work evenly. You don't have any slip stitch rows to worry about. And the number that you're single crocheting for this is the same. It's two single crochet stitches worked into the side of each double crochet stitch. So depending on your size, you will end up with quite a few single crochet stitches for some of the larger sizes, especially. Some of these do get to be a little bit tight, especially on the turning chain rows. But if you just work slowly and carefully, you'll be sure to get them all and end up in a good spot. So now we're to the main color stitches. So this big section of main color double crochet rows, and we're just going to continue as done before. There's really nothing different about this because you are skipping the slip stitch rows. So coming up to the very end of this row, we will chain one and then turn. And now we're working along the beginning edge. So if it's hard to see that first stitch, just pull the tail to the side a little bit. And you can see since we worked into the bar behind the chain, those stitches right there look just like regular stitches as though it was a row we just completed. You'll just work into both bars of each of these stitches, single crochet all the way across evenly, no increases or decreases. I like working the bar behind the chain because it is so easy to add a border later on. You really don't have any holes or gapping and it looks super similar to the opposite side. So zooming ahead here to the end of this row, we're coming up to the last couple stitches. Make sure you get that final single crochet stitch. It might be a little bit harder to see, but just make sure you get each one. And then now we will chain one and turn to go down the opposite edge. So just as we did for the other le side lengthwise, we're going to be working into each of these two single crochet stitches into each double crochet stitch just by working into two of the three strands of that make up these stitches. Just go nice and slowly and evenly. Once you get to the slip stitch row, again, you aren't working into the slip stitch row, but you'll have some strands that you might just want to hold aside so that they're out of the way. And then if you carried your main col color up along the edge, you'll just work that main color 
inside the single crochet stitches. So what that means is you just leave it on top of the work of the part that you're picking up or single crocheting the stitch into. So I'm just finding my spot here. It's a little bit harder to see because I do have these strands somewhat in the way. So that's why it helps to kind of hold them off to the side. But just make sure that you're holding that strand that you carried inside this single crochet stitch or otherwise there was really no point in carrying it up. And when you do this, it's essentially like weaving it in and holding it in that single crochet edge as you're working. So you can see there, I just worked it over those stitches. So really simple. You can see here I have my next stitch to work into. It's pretty easy to find and I'm just single crocheting over that strand that I used to carry. And you will repeat this across all of this row as well. All of the color block stitches, if you did carry your main color yarn, you should have this and just make sure to hold it inside those single crochet stitches. So coming to the very end of this row, you will just chain one and then you slip stitch with that first stitch that you worked to join. Pretty straightforward and now we're going to work row or round two of our border. So moving on to the second stitch, we're going to slip stitch into the second stitch and then slip stitch into each stitch all the way across. So what that means is you just insert your hook, pull up a loop and then pull this loop through the first loop. And you can see here that just thickens up this edge a little bit and adds a little bit of structure, support, and some strength on that edge for the blanket. It gives it a really nice, almost like an I-cord look if you ever knit. Um, it looks kind of like an I-cord. So coming up to that corner, the chain one space, we will slip stitch into the chain one space and then turn your work and continue along that opposite row. I already did the side here. Now you're working along the opposite row. So just a slip stitch into every single crochet stitch and a slip stitch in the chain one corner space as well. So you can see here what it kind of looks like when you get to the corner. It's just a nice smooth corner. It's not too rounded, not too sharp, really easy. And it has that nice I-cord look to it. So coming up to the end here, we have just a couple more stitches, a couple more slip stitches. Make sure you get that final one, that final chain one space right there. Slip stitch into that stitch. And now we will break our yarn and I'm going to show you how I join it together. So pull that through. After you cut your yarn, pull that through and then thread it with your needle. And we're going to duplicate this next stitch. It's essentially the same thing as a slip stitch would be, but what we're going to do is follow the path of that next stitch. So you can see that stitch goes around and then through the stitch after it. So we're going to thread our needle through that stitch as well, and then go back through the hole of this first stitch, just kind of to duplicate that look. And it gives a really seamless, flawless finish. You can't even tell that that's the beginning or the end of your blanket. So now the final step is just to weave in all of your ends and this will just secure it. I know it's a little bit tedious because it is a striped color work style pattern, but it's worth it to just weave in your ends really securely. So I do actually, when I'm making a blanket, I tie a knot. I know some people don't, but I just think that it's going to be used a lot and I don't want to risk it coming undone. But because I am tying the knot, I still definitely weave in my ends very securely. So I am going to show you quickly how I weave in my ends just so that you can maybe weave them in securely as well. So as you can see here, I'm working in that blue ocean color and I'm just weaving in the end. I'm gonna go back and forth three times. So one direction back and then the other direction again. So three ways and I'm really working that needle in there. I'm splitting through stitches and yarn and just making sure that it's really secure. If you go in through the easiest path, then it's also able to come out at the easiest path. But if you weave in that end kind of in a way that it doesn't really love and kind of force it through the stitches and the yarn, 
then it's hard if it's harder to weave in it's harder to come out as well just make sure that you kind of stretch it out as you go so that you're not having it be too tight so that there's no pucker there so you can see I went down back and now I have to go the first direction once more so down and back three times or down back down three ways to total this is just so as the piece stretches the yarn doesn't work itself out and you have plenty of space there if anything does poke out you can just trim the end but it really shouldn't if you weave them in in this way you can see how nice and smooth and camouflaged everything looks i hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe if you would like to stay up to date for any more tutorials that we come out with thanks so much <laughs>